Are you ready? Are you ready? I got problems on problems on problems on problems on problems on problems I solve them. I run through the money, the pressure be calling. Left on my blessings, I feel like I'm falling. The birdie is back. Tell me I'm garbage, I'm going through something, that's why I ain't calling. Phone and progression, it's all that I wanted. The phone and affection, I summon and dub it. Cause bitch, I got problems on problems on problems on problems on problems on problems I solve them. I run through the money, the pressure be calling. Left on my blessings, I Good evening, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel at the Anchor Desk with my partner, Clark Kellogg, bringing you the 2K Sports NCAA Selection Show. We're all set to show you the seedings and pairings, so get out your bracket sheet, get those pencils ready. Here are the basics. Of the 65 available tournament bids, 31 are automatically given to conference champions. The tournament committee hands out the remaining 34 bids on an at-large basis. An opening round game will take place on Tuesday night to narrow the field to 64 teams. Before we get into the brackets for the upcoming tournament, let's take a look at the final top 25 media poll. There are a couple of major changes in the rankings as March Madness approaches. The Kentucky Wildcats jumped all the way from the number 19 spot to number 13. Now let's take a look at the NCAA tournament bubble and see which teams are sitting at home with their fingers crossed, hoping to see their name in the brackets. There are a lot of worthy candidates among these 10 teams, Clark. Which of these bubble teams stands out to you right now? Rhode Island put together a solid season, but their record just isn't impressive enough to make them a no-brainer bid. The Texas Longhorn are the top overall seed, and they will play in the East Regional. They begin the tournament as the dominant team in college basketball. They've been ranked number one in the media poll for the past seven weeks. We'll soon find out if they can live up to their billing. On to the second number one seed, who will play in the South Regional. The Michigan State Spartans are seeking their third NCAA championship in school history. The UCLA Bruins are our third number one seed, and they'll play in the Midwest Regional. They're back in the tournament again, and no doubt they'll be feeding off the experience of last year's appearance as they try to get to the Final Four this year. And finally, our fourth number one seed will play in the West Regional. The Villanova Wildcats are in the tournament field as a number one seed for the first time in the history of their program. Now, here's how the brackets shape up based on where the number one seeds have been assigned. In one national semifinal game, the winner of the East Regional will play the winner of the South Regional in the other semifinal game. The winner of the Midwest Regional will play the winner of the West Regional. Those games will be played on Saturday, April 4th. Then it'll be on to the national championship game on Monday night, April 6th. Anything shocking to you about those picks? I don't think I'm alone in my surprise with these picks. Whenever you reach this far down the pole for the top seeds, you're guaranteed to have some second guesses coming your way. So with the number one seeds out of the way, it's finally time to tackle the rest of the brackets. First up, we take a look at the East Regional. The Texas Longhorn are the top seed, finishing at 30 and three. They won both the regular season and conference tournament titles in the Big 12. They will take on the winner of the opening round play-in game between Maine with 13 wins and Maryland Eastern Shore from the MEAC. Duke comes in as the number three seed, finishing at 24 and eight. Moorhead State comes in to face them at number 14 with 14 wins in the tournament championship of the Ohio Valley Conference. Our number seven seed is from the Big East. The Providence Friars were rewarded for their outstanding play this season with an at-large bid and a ticket to the big dance. They are going to play the number 10 seed, the Syracuse Orange, who were semifinalists in their conference tournament, finishing at 19 and 12. The Michigan State Spartans are the top seed, finishing at 27 and six. They won both the regular season and conference tournament titles in the Big Ten. They'll take on the Weber State Wildcats. The number 16 ranked West Virginia comes in as the number eight seed, finishing at 22 and 12. Arizona State comes in to face them at number nine with 19 wins. Miami comes in as the number four seed, finishing at 21 and eight. And they'll take on the 13th seed from the MAC, the Red Hawks of Miami of Ohio, with 22 wins. The UCLA Bruins are the top seed, finishing at 26 and 7. They were conference tournament champions in the Pac-10. They'll take on the New Mexico State Aggie, the number 16 ranked team. The Villanova Wildcats are the top seed, finishing at 27 and 6. 
They finish second in the Big East. They'll take on the Valparaiso Crusaders. Our number six seed is from the independent ranks. The Connecticut Huskies were rewarded for their outstanding play this season with an at-large bid and a ticket to the big dance. They are going to play the number 11 seed, the San Diego State Aztecs, who came in first in their conference tournament, finishing at 25 and 10. The New Jersey Institute of Technology Highlanders are in as the number three seed. They'll be taking on the number 14 seed, the Trojans of Arkansas Little Rock, with 15 wins. Clark, how do you view this year's top 16? The New Jersey Institute of Technology Highlanders are surprised to me as a three seed. They weren't quite strong enough to warrant that kind of position. They were more suited to get in as a four seed. Duke is easily the most dangerous number three seed out there. I'd say they have just as good a chance as the number one or number two seeds above them to make it to the Final Four. Now, let's see how the conference representation fares. The Big East gets eight teams. The Pac-10 with seven, six out of the Big 12. The SEC gets five teams. What a down year for the non-power conferences. We're used to seeing at least one of those conferences compete on the level of the power conferences but not this year. It's too bad we didn't see more small conference schools in the tournament. None of those conferences got more than one team in the tourney, and I don't expect any David and Goliath stories out of the teams that did get in. I'm surprised there were so few bids for the teams in the Mountain West Conference. It was an especially disappointing year for that conference. Usually you can count on a few of the nation's elite teams coming out of there, but this was a season where very few of those teams could maintain any type of positive momentum. Here's the list of the teams that were on the bubble heading into Selection Sunday. So, partner, which of those invitees should be sending the Selection Committee a thank you card? Notre Dame made it into the field probably because of their major conference affiliation. Their win-loss record isn't outstanding, but the bottom line is they play the top competition week in and week out, and that counts for a lot. While those teams are celebrating getting into the tournament, let's take a look at the other teams who were on the short end of the stick. Auburn stumbled to the finish line coming down the stretch, and that's not the way to close out the season if you're hoping for an at-large bid. When they couldn't get it done in their conference tournament, their goose was cooked. Thanks, Clark. I'm sure that this year will provide us with all the thrills and excitement that we've come to expect from the tournament. Greg, it's going to be a fantastic tournament. We've got an outstanding field and a lot of sensational players. I guarantee there are some memorable moments soon to come. For my partner, Clark Kellogg, and for all of us here in the 2K Sports Studios, I'm Greg Gumbel. Thanks for joining us on the NCAA Selection Show, brought to you by State Farm, the number one auto insurer. Enjoy all the excitement of the NCAA tournament. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the NJIT Legacy Mode here on College Hoops 2K8. We are officially here in March Madness. The NCAA Tournament West Regional 3C, you know what I'm saying, Rough Arena. We will be taking on the 14th seeded University of uh, Arkansas at Little Rock. Take a look at their squad, man. They got a senior shooting guard averaging 12. They got a senior small forward averaging 12. They got a sophomore center 6'10 averaging 9 and 7. They got uh, Joshua O'Bannon, junior power four, averaging nine. They get six off the bench from Gilbert, five off the bench from Mentor, four off the bench from Krauser. Now, take a look at our squad after Abernathy's uh, lowly performance with only just one point last game. His 17-point uh, average dropped down to 16.5. Isaac's now up. I mean, he's now down to 15.9. Uh, Elisar's up to 15.9 with his six and a half uh, boards. Montrell's up to 9.4. Harris gives us 4.7. And Crosby and everybody else chips in where they can fit in. But Crosby, uh, you know, is averaging five boards a game. Still three steals a game from Abernathy, two and a half from Isaac Johnson. And we're looking to come out here and get this W. Nothing more left to say. I'll see you guys on the court. Let's go, y'all. Let's do it. Get ready for College Hoops 2K8. The Arkansas Little Rock Trojans battle the New Jersey Institute of Technology. Welcome, basketball fans, to the first round of March Madness. We're here at Rupp Arena. Along with Tracy Wolfson and Bill Raftery, I'm Vern Lundquist. What do you think, Bill? There's a terrific matchup at the small forward position. Number 13 is an excellent small forward. He's got great touch around the rim. He's a real dangerous post presence. Collinson is a top-notch small forward in his own right. This guy has such a will to win. He plays the game with joy and he never stops working to improve. They're both warriors. We'll just have to see who emerges victorious. All right, so our young freshman is going up against their senior small forward, Corsley Collison. His work is definitely cut His work is definitely cut out for him, man. We need to come out here, play strong, play fast, and do what it is we do best, man. And that's put the ball in the hoop and knock down threes. 
We're going to go to LSR here early. We got to get him going early like we did last game. They're doubling. Isaac's open in the corner. I need nope. that short. All right. I know I kind of want to start off every game with a three anyway. Good defense from Crosby. Finish that. Hey, let's go. Run him off the three-point line. Run every single person off the three-point line. That's what we're here for. That's good money, too. I knew he was going to hit that. Great defense, fellas. Good rotation. Still, we out. Abernathy running the break. I see you, LSR. Keep coming. Yeah, let's go. I'm back, LSR. Get back to yours, man. Get back to yours. There we go. Push it. Montreal running the break. Hey, with the left. Ah, I feel like something bit me. LSR doesn't get the steal. Oh, they blow the layup, though. That's what I'm talking about. Come on, Montreal. With the left. Let's go. Come on now. This is when we got to start to run away with this, John. On the boards, because that was kind of forced. Make them pay for it that way. Kobe. Hey! Let's go, man. Good defense. Why do we have McClung on their guard? Oh, good up and under on LSR. I fell for that. I had a feeling that's, that was coming, too, but it's all good. It's all good. Come on, my trail. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're not knocking down any jump shots, but you're sure finishing at the rim today. Harris playing defense, and again, he lets the damn rim block his shot. He does. He did that last game, and that's one of the reasons why we lost. Oh, he's a baby down there. He's a baby down there. Let's go. First free throw up slightly early, but it does go. Right now, perfect at the line, and he's perfect release. Let's go. That's what? Four for four at the line so far. Harris playing great defense. Can we finish, please? Thank you. Come on, man. Let's run these dudes off the floor. Run these dudes off the floor. And one, ref. Dang. About time we get a foul call. Come on, Abernathy. Make up for that one-point game last game. There we go. You know what I mean? I, I'm a firm believer if Abernathy was was available for the rest of that game last game, we would have won. Because he's, he's honestly the best shooter on the team. For real, for real. Dumps it off. Coarsely, oh. Collison, we run him off the line. I'll give up the two over the three all day. Good defense, fellas. And then they still shoot a three, and whoo, big shot. He took that with a lot of confidence. Big shot there. Harris trying to get to the basket, driving, kick action. Montreal, let's go. Kadi, Cohen with a block. Harris, he doesn't really dribble well, but he gets to the basket there with a crossover. He has seven points in this game. Jason Harris playing well. Give me that steal, man. Pass to Denton, and he short arms the alligator arms it. Elijah Carter with the steal, though. Jason Harris, he's more of a high flyer, you know what I mean? That's his game. Give me the board. You know what I mean? Getting his own board as a point guard. Then finishing nine points in the first half for him. Shot clock dwindling. Oh, come on. One shot. Number one with the crossover. Number Montreal. Hey, that's how you end the half, baby. Up 14 going into the locker room. Montreal has 15 heading into the locker room. You know what I mean? 46-32. The team is playing well. I'm loving what I'm seeing right now. Oh, you see here. Oh, just notice I'm blocking the score. You know what I mean? 46-42. We're both shooting 44%. We both only hit three threes. We're perfect at the free throw line. Uh, my trail is our leading score, followed by Harris. All right, so you guys should be proud of me. I noticed that I was blocking the opposing team's score. You know what I mean? And I'm, and I'm changing it at halftime. So, you know, it's going to be just one half of me blocking the score. You know what I mean? Leave, leave the jokes at home. Number 13. You know what I mean? We all make mistakes, but here we are, man. Start this back up. Get Isaac going to start the second half. Bang, let's go. Back like we never left, man. Keeping up the same intensity. Give me that steal. Isaac, you better finish. You, you, you pissed me off, bro. Come on, Montreal. You got to hit one. That's long. Where's your confidence? Like, you're, you're scoring. You're our leading scorer. But, like, if you hit your threes wide open, you might have 30 in the first half. You know what I'm saying? Crosby, great defense. We got Isaac. Who's running with us? All right. No need to force it. Get open, Isaac. I'll take the midi. Get in there. Push it. The ball movement, driving kick. Hey, let's go, Montreal. There we go. 
He's shooting 42%. All right, so they're starting to do, put, give us a little press here. Number it's weak, though. It Super point. easy to break. Dangerous pass. Number 22. Goes oh, they was, I had to hurry up and force that. Oh, give me that, Crosby. Hey. There was plenty of time on the shot clock. Good move. We could have shot that, too. But instead, we'll take that open shot. <laughs> Let's get it. Slightly late, but we get it to go. All right. So we go one for two at the line. The D. I see you, Harris. One more. Come on now. Yeah. Let's go, man. Knock, them, knock that down. Oh, why am I doing all this dribbling with him? That's not his game. Oh, cookies. Good steal by Abernathy. Hey. Oh, El Bogus into LSR. Oh, I thought you were going to blow that somehow, my guy. Not what we want here. Going up for the layup. And one. Let's go, Vincent. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Let's try to get three the hard way here. Slightly late. But it rolls home and gets in the basket. Let's go. The Trojans down big. Takes it up. Oh, yes, sir. We got the double-double. I was a little stat horse with this, but, you know what I mean? I was on my on my Russell Westbrook, but I needed it. All right, boys. So, we win this one huge, you know what I mean, uh, 19 points, um, you know, because the second string came in. You know, they couldn't score as much, but nonetheless, we get a big W. Uh, Avion Montrell, he shot, you know, it took a lot of shots. He took 20 shots to get his 20, but he got his 20 nonetheless. He only scored five in the second half. But, you know what I mean, this was uh, his tournament coming out party. And, you know, uh, this was the right team to get, help get his confidence up. He definitely has to shoot better from three, though. So, final game stats, man. We went 30 for 70 at, 42, at 43%. Six for 20 from the three. Only 30%. But we shot 81% from the free throw line. You don't ever see us do that. 15 assists, only 11 turnovers. We <laughs> They had 34 turnovers. We had 31 steals. You know what I mean? We got out-rebounded by 20. 45 to 26 is absolutely insane that we still won by 20. Um, they had 13 offensive boards. We just got to get better in that department. 38 points in the paint, 21 points off the bench. They gave us 23, but we had 23 fast break points. So we had a lot of easy buckets this game. Box score, Gary Abernathy, 9 and 10. He was one point away from a double-double. You know what I mean? Shot well. Shot perfect from the line. Isaac Johnson, 10, 5, 3, and 3. Shot 50%. Montreal gave us 20, went over his stats. Uh, Crosby gave us a 6 2 2 and 4. LSR gave us 17 to 10. Harris gave us 14 off the bench with six steals, five from 11, five for 11 from the from the field. And you know, what I mean, that's what ultimately took us over the top. His play off the bench was was very very huge for us. Um, you know what I'm saying? And uh, we're moving on to round number two. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode and are excited for the rest of this tournament run. If you didn't, if you are, stop and smash that like button. Hit me up in the comment section below. Subscribe if you're new. It's your boy, Uncle Sam's Reject, ArcadeGames.com. I'm out of here. Peace. I would like to give a special shout out to our Heisman sponsor, Isaac Johnson.